Well, hello, good people. This is Stable Cascade Stability AI's latest model, which is based off a different architecture. We'll get into that in a second here. I actually put in a prompt of an astronaut on an alien planet, and we're running this on a Hugging Face page. So I'm not sure about the traffic, but currently it's working pretty well. So I'll leave all the links in the description below where you can check it out. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at uh, the results here. Here we go. Follows the prompt pretty well. Let's open this up. In the prompt, I have him levitating off the ground. So aesthetically, it looks pretty good. I haven't compared it to SDXL, but just, you know, based on what I know, I wouldn't say it's better at this point so far from what I've seen, but this model is supposed to be more efficient where you can run it on less steps, that type of thing. A few more examples here that I ran just a few minutes ago. And so far it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's overly impressive, but this is an early release mainly for research purposes and for non-commercial use. Now, if we head over to Stability AI's website, you're going to see some information based on this model, and it's actually based off a new architecture. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this, but you can see it here. If you click on the link, it brings you to the paper, which you can check out yourself. And again, this is only for non-commercial use at this point, although there was a Twitter post where Emad responded that there will be a commercial version coming soon. This part is super interesting where basically it says it's easy to train and fine tune on consumer hardware thanks to its three stage approach. Here we see some example images and they look great. I mean, I couldn't tell you off the bat if it's better than SDXL, but basically down here they talk about these various stages. A lot of this stuff is over my head. So <laughs> for those of you that understand it, you can go ahead and read it here. And then there are some evaluations compared on prompt alignment and aesthetic quality. And I was actually happy to see that they measured it against Playground V2, which uh, update will be coming soon. For those of you that know, I work for Playground. There's also comparisons from SDXL Turbo, standard SDXL, whatever this word is, it's German. And on Google Translate, it translates to hot dog. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, if you're German, please let me know. I'm not sure the reasoning behind the naming, but maybe one of you can uh, enlighten me. And on this slide, they do talk about the inference steps here, where with SDXL Playground V2, the inference steps that would take 50 steps, Cascade can do it uh, at 10 steps. But I don't want to bore you with all those technical details. I do want to see if I could run it locally on my 8 gigabyte VRAM card. I'm highly doubtful. And I actually found out about this. We're going to go into Pinocchio. And if you don't know about Pinocchio, I've got a video you can check out. But basically, you can install anything Stable Diffusion with this installer. We're going to go to Discover. And you should see it on the very first page here. Stable Cascade. We're going to click on that. Click Download. And the reason why I like Pinocchio. Let me just save this as Stable Cascade. I'm going to click Download. Uh, the reason why I like Pinocchio is because if you're not familiar with manual installation, it takes care of all the installation for you. Git, Python, any of those things I know can get pretty confusing. So now I've been using Pinocchio to manage uh, all my local platforms, Automatic 11.11, Comfy UI, Focus, whatever the case may be. But it's not limited to Stable Diffusion. There's a lot of other things that I'll show you in other videos. So once you click on the stable cascade icon, you're going to get this option in Pinocchio to install. Let's uh, cross our fingers and see uh, if it's actually going to run on my system. As I said, I have a eight gigabyte VRAM 3060 Ti currently. I can't afford anything better at the moment. Running a Ryzen 5800X, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm very skeptical that I could run it. And if it can't, I probably won't include this in the video. Now, while that installs, we'll go back to the Hugging Face page. If you click on the advanced options, you have very similar controls. You've got your negative prompts. Prompts up here, you can input those there. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. You have an area for your seed, your width, your height, number of images, basically the same stuff. But the differences you're going to see here is you have your prior inference steps, decoder guidance scale here, and decoder inference steps. 
Not that I'm familiar with this technology, but it kind of sounds like this was set at 20 and this was set at 10 by default. I figure it's kind of like having a refiner stage where you have two diffusion models and the last step is the VAE. VAE is usually the last step that converts the actual noise to pixels, right? So my gut feeling is that it runs, you know, for 30 steps. The last 10 steps, it does this decoder inference steps. Makes sense to me. Again, I could be totally wrong. Okay, well, it looks like the installation is done. It says done here. And we'll go ahead and click start and fingers crossed. Now at this point, it's gonna download some dependencies to actually run the application. So let's see how this works. No errors, so far so good. Now we have an open web UI option. We're gonna click on that. And uh, yeah, we get the same interface, but let's see if I can get it to work. Uh, I'm gonna actually pop this out of Pinocchio. Let's pick the same prompt and uh, same settings. Negative prompt, I don't tend to use too many these days. We'll leave it at 1024 by 1024. You can adjust it. Oh, it only goes up to 1536, that's why. Let's leave the defaults for now. Guidance scale at four, prior inference steps 20, decoder inference steps at 10. Let's run one image for now, just to see how long it takes. Hey, we're getting a preview. It's generating, that's a good thing. So five minutes for an image with my GPU. If you're in my position, you might as well run it on the Hugging Face page to try it out. I don't think it's worth waiting five minutes at this point, but at least it runs on my system. And I expect the open source commercial version uh, will be a lot more optimized and faster. So I ran it another time just to double check the times. And uh, yeah, so five minutes the first time, the second time, four minutes and 38 seconds. Anyway, folks, if you happen to try it out, let me know in the comments below what your experiences are. If you have a better GPU, you'll probably have a better experience than me. But again, you can run this on Hugging Face too. Um, yeah, until next video, I'll see you when I see you.